Hey everybody. Well, for those of you who <laughs> have watched my channel for a while, you might recognize this street light. This is out in front of my house. <laughs> uh, Carpo After Dark. It's something I do once in a while, but... <sighs> Sorry, I'm drinking some coffee here. Kind of trying to stay awake. It's something that... Uh, I've done quite a few of these in the past, and it just, as soon as I started this, it reminded me that every time I do it, somebody who's new to the channel says, oh, you know, it's so much better when you're facing the camera, and uh, so I should make a disclaimer first off to say, uh, if you've never made a video on YouTube, um, it's, it's, it's very uh, difficult to get used to talking with the camera, but I've made <laughs> like over 3,000 videos facing the camera and uh, most of them and once in a while standing out in front in the evening it's so much more freeing to be able to just look around even though I'm looking at the street light and the neighbors houses and all that crap uh, to not have to stare at a lens and pretend like I'm talking to a person but at the same time it's very strange strange to talk to nothing you know but I'm talking to you all, and I really enjoy your company, all of you. I don't feel like I point people out by name enough. I don't feel like I uh, give people's, like, you know, enough credit, my subscribers. I have some really cool subscribers and customers from Carpus Botanicals website that, you know, I, I, it's very hard for me to know which ones of my customers are also subscribers. And then, you know, I, I reluctantly use Facebook because, you know, some people I can only reach there, but sorry if I don't respond to anybody's comments much on there. I don't have Messenger or use any of that crap. But it's, it's, it's hard enough to keep up with comments on this channel plus my, uh, uh, my other YouTube channel too, which I only monitor once in a while. That's just for the website so I can keep up on stocks and prices and new strains and stuff. But... Uh, I want people to know that YouTube was never for me about, ever, about <laughs> marketing. So my YouTube channel that's for my Kratom business is completely separate from the videos I make here. And I keep it that way on purpose because, you know, there's some things that aren't worth marketing. I mean, <laughs> I've been making videos for about, I don't know what, I I don't know, like six years or so, you know, really making regular videos and, and at least one a day. It's crazy that I still make them, to my, you know, to me, but over 3,000 or 3,500, I've erased at least 500, so I've probably made 4,000 videos, and I've also <laughs> just realized I have like 12,400 subscribers or something, and I was like, holy shit, you know what does that mean, you know, I mean, does that put me in some obligatory state to where I have to make a video about something, hell no, and that's the thing, I can still talk about whatever I want and not have to give a fuck, I've had people contact me at least once a month from various, like, YouTube partnership groups that are like, oh yeah, come on, join our, <laughs> join our partnership, you know, and we'll give you a percentage of these advertisements, and I, and I send them an email back, I always email back, I'm like, hey, I appreciate the offer, but I'm actually, you know, I do this for, for myself, not for profit, and I make it a point to do that because I want to make a point, I want them to know that it's not always about money, that not everybody's out there to make a buck, so, uh, of course, as a human being, I still have to make a living, right? I mean, that's a uh, given. <laughs> you have to, you have to get by, but that's totally separate from making YouTube videos. So, uh, rambling on, here I am out in the front of my house, and the reason I started making this video is because I walked outside and I thought. Pardon me, but <laughs> it's very strange. I walked out into the front yard and, you know, it was like one of those moments of walking out into a space, a space that I think of more as a substance, you know, air, walking through air. Everything is, you know, part of this 
uniform substance we're all part of. And it made me think about wanting to find your place. Like, sometimes that's escaping a group of people, sometimes it's joining a group of people. And being human means that we want to feel welcome. We want to feel comfortable. Those of us who have great family lives tend to be more comfortable in our ego and in our demeanor and our self, you know, uh, the way we handle ourselves in society. And those of us who uh, have horrible home lives tend to be perhaps more reserved, uh, perhaps overly friendly or under-friendly. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and speculate on the particular details of, you know, personality types and how they interact with <laughs> all the different factors that make us who we are. But <clears throat> the message I'm trying to convey here is that every one of us does share one main thread, one common thread, one one thing that, whether we admit it or not, is uh, is important to us, and that's belonging, belonging to something, being a part of something. For some people, it's, you know, uh, they give, give, give. Some people are just obsessed with, you know, charity and, and uh, giving their time, giving their money, doing everything they can to help others. Uh, for some people, it's uh, the opposite. It's about making more and more and more money, you know. Uh, and for some people, uh, you know, whatever moves you is the point. And being human is very difficult. And everybody wants to find a place to fit in, some, something that makes them feel like they're worthy, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's no point in hiding from that. You know, for me to stand here while I'm making this video, realizing that a lot of people will watch it, it's, it gets stranger and stranger, and it makes me kind of actually bummed. It reminds me of when I first started making videos and how excited I was to have, like, ten views on my video. And I was like, cool, man. You know, people want to hear what I have to say. And now that I have, you know, even a few hundred... I'm like, eh, I don't know, like, does that obligate me to feel like it has to be important to other people? But it shouldn't. But it, in a way it does. <laughs> it gives me, you know, a taste of the obligation that people who are looked, you know, looked up upon or people who have uh, fans or followers, you know, in certain circles must feel like. Like if you say the wrong thing, you're instantly taken out of context. But I don't mind it. I mean, I, I I don't mean that egotistically. I'm trying to be honest, you know. Like, it's weird making a video knowing that a lot of people will watch it. It's almost like you have to say certain... Uh, you have to be, you know, responsible. Let's just say that. I can't make videos about drugs like I used to. Not because I don't, you know, believe in that drugs should be legal. I'm a total supporter of full drug legalization. It's just that I don't really want to support, uh, you know, some kid taking it the wrong way and perhaps, you know, getting himself in trouble and me feeling guilty about it. Um, it's weird. I get a lot of personal emails and questions and, and messages that are very uh, oriented. You know, people trust me with certain things that I shouldn't be trusted with. I don't mean that I'm not trustworthy. I just mean that, to me, it's amazing that people are so open with their personal lives and, and and should be much, you know, should be very cautious, but at the same time, people need help, and they they want suggestions. And I just don't feel comfortable giving, like, some of the advice people have asked me for. Everything from suicide to addiction. I guess being a Kratom vendor makes it difficult, because I, I know that it's used for withdrawal, but at the same time, I don't want to... <laughs> uh, give advice, not because I don't want to help people, but on certain fronts, I, I don't want to get in trouble, you know, I feel like, you know, Big Brother's always watching, you know, Pharma's always out to get somebody, and I don't want to have somebody order it from me from a state where it's illegal, for example, like Arkansas, I think, and <clears throat> send it out there and then, you know, end up with getting in trouble for sending Kratom to an illegal state. It's fucking ridiculous that Kratom's illegal anywhere. Because it helps so many people. And, uh... I absolutely adore Kratom. 
I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's probably my favorite herb other than cannabis. And I've been smoking cannabis since about 91. I mean, you know, 26 years or so. <clears throat> and uh, I have a strong respect for it. I've smoked it more or less every day except the times when I've quit for probation. And I don't think of cannabis really as much. At least I didn't years ago. Even up for the first 20 years I smoked pot, I thought, how can people think of this as a bad thing? Like, I don't understand. It's just very mild. And then uh, after quitting for a while and smoking again, and then um, starting to cherish sobriety and understand how awesome it is to just feel naturally high, it, it changed my perspective. And now when I smoke pot, yeah, which I still do all the time. It's just like I have a total different reverence for it, and I don't do it all the time. So, every day, but not all the time every day. I wait until the evening usually, or at least the late afternoon, and smoke a smaller amount. But to each his own, that's the thing. You know, uh, my point being on that one is that we change uh, our perspectives on what's normal and uh, <clears throat> what, what sobriety is being something that's so subjective. Nobody knows what another person's consciousness is like. So I'm standing here in my driveway talking to you about life and my perspective, walking over to my car. My cat's over here sitting on there. You probably can't see her, but... What's up, girl? So I... Uh... It's very difficult to explain that feeling of the epiphany that everyone else has a different life. There's a word for it, and uh, it's called sonder. I think it was a recent word, but it reminded me of... Uh... Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's like... <coughs> got some phlegm in there. Sonder means that it's the realization that everyone else has a word. Uh, everyone else has a life that's very similar to yours. And that you're not just some actor in a play. Which is what so, much, so many people feel like. Oh, well, you know, everything's there to set, you know, set up for them. That, that the whole world's out to get them. Or that the world's out for them. Whatever it may be. Selfish or selfless. But... Uh, the point being that Sonder is the realization that every single other person out there, even all your neighbors and your family, they're thinking their own things, that they're having their own lives, and that we're all just doing the best we can. I think that that's important because it helps us cope, but it also helps us really revere how other people, you know, <laughs> aren't out to serve us and don't understand what we want. You know, that they're not just mind readers. Everybody grew up in their own circumstances. I mean, my life hasn't always been easy. I lost my father at 15, but I don't use that as some crutch, of course. I still have my mom. You know, it's that kind of thing. There's always a, a different side to things. I have a great family. I have a... Uh, awesome kids, you know, that's just the world that uh, we live in. We lose people, we gain people, we learn things, we forget things. Hopefully we don't gain dementia. And uh, I wouldn't say gain dementia, I guess you'd say we, hopefully we don't uh, get dementia because I think that's one of the things that scares us the most is losing who we are. And as long as we have a consciousness, we can say that we're part of this universe, as small as we are, as insignificant as may, we may really be. I find that insignificance empowering. It's okay to realize that we don't matter in the big picture because we came from a singularity, so we'll go back to that singularity and everyone is integrally tied to this universe. You cannot not be part of this universe. Consciousness cannot disappear. Uh, it's one of those realizations that once you have, you can't let go of. You you just can't deny. You know, there's no fear. We're all just here. Talk to you all later.